Hello students, welcome to the channel. In this series, Target 750 Plus, we look at advanced problems from ACT and ACT Math. Today, we look at absolute value problems. Question one, how many solutions does the equation x squared is equal to modulus x have? Now, we know that modulus x, that is the absolute value of x, is x when x is greater than or equal to zero, and it's negative x when x is less than zero. So let's assume x is greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> then I can say x squared is x. I can write modulus x as x. So x squared minus x is zero. So x times x minus one is zero. So x is zero and one. And both zero and one work because they satisfy the condition x greater than or equal to zero. Let's look at um, x less than zero. Then I can say x squared is equal to negative x. So this would be x squared plus x is zero. So x into x plus one is zero. So x is zero or negative one. Now we have already taken x equal to zero as a solution. So we don't have to consider this, but x equal to negative one satisfies this, right? Because uh, we see that negative one is an answer here. So the right answer for this is three solutions, zero, one, and negative one. So the two solutions that we had gotten with x greater than zero is now tagged along with one solution from x less than zero. And so the right answer here is uh, three, three solutions. Okay, uh, let's go to the next question. One second. Okay. Um, the set G is defined by the points X, Y, such that three is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to seven, where we have the absolute value of X and three is less than or equal to Y is less than or equal to seven, where we have the absolute value of Y. <clears throat> what is the area bounded by G? Okay, so let's say we have the coordinate plane. This is the X axis and this is the Y axis. So, I can write this equation as three less than X less than seven and minus seven less than X less than minus three, right? Because in the absolute value, I would obviously on the positive side, X could lie between three and seven, but on the negative side, it could lie between minus seven and minus three. So let's say this is minus seven, this is minus three, this is three and this is seven. So this is, these are the lines that I get, right? And this shaded region is the solution region for the first inequality, three less than modulus X is less than seven. Okay, what about three less than equal to modulus Y is less than equal to seven? Again, this translates into three less than y less than seven and minus seven less than y less than negative three. So let's draw those. Let's say this is three, uh, this is seven, this is minus three and this is minus seven. So this is, this is y is seven, y is three, this is y is negative three, and this is y is negative seven, right? So the region that we get here is this region and this region, right? So what is the region that we are interested in? It will be the intersection of the two regions that we got. So it would be the region where the green and the blue lines intersect. So if I draw out those regions, it would be this region here, this region here, this one, and this one. 
So if you think about it, I actually get four squares <clears throat> as the regions I'm interested in, because this is four and this is also four. So I get four squares. So the area of one such square is 16. So for four such squares, the total area would be 64, option D. Okay, question three, the figure above shows the graph of the function defined by fx is mod two x plus four for all numbers x, for which of the following functions defined for all numbers x, does the graph of g intersect the graph of f? So we have uh, four functions, four options, gx is half x plus two, x plus two, two x plus two, and three x plus two. So we know that the y-intercept is two in all cases. And half x would mean that if this is two, then one, two, three, four, this has to be negative four. So this is how gx is half x plus two would look. And you can see that this would never intersect this graph because as you go along on the right, these lines would diverge further and further. Okay, what about x plus two? x plus two will look like this if this is negative two. So let me change the color. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so y is equal to, or rather let me say gx equal to, uh, gx equal to x plus two. Uh, again, I see a divergence. So this intersection is not likely to happen. Okay, what about gx is 2x plus 2? So 2x plus 2 would mean that the slope is 2. So this would look like this. So this is y, again, let me say gx. This line is gx is 2x plus two. And you can see that this line is parallel to two X plus four, because of course, on the right hand side, this has a slope of two, and this also has a slope of two. So these also would not meet because they are parallel. But I know now that if I increase the slope any further, then there would be an intersection, right? And so my answer should be D, GX is three X plus two. In this case, um, the slope is, uh, three, so three is two by whatever I need X to be. So X is two by three. So point, negative 0.66 is where it would intersect on the X axis. So let me again change the color. Uh, yeah, so it will be, uh, this was, yeah. So let's say negative 0.66 is here and this is how this graph would look and it would at some point intersect my given graph, right? So in a question like this, it's always a good idea to plot and see how the shapes are looking, how the graphs are looking and look at the way the slope behaves before you choose your answer. Hope this exercise was useful. If it was, hit like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section what other videos you'd like me to upload. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.